Hey everybody, just one more video before we get a workout in here today and do a few other things and then head to KDK Radio for Rob Pratt Monday night. Tomorrow night, the Pirates welcome the Los Angeles Dodgers. First pitch against uh, our Buckos will be at 7.05. You can hear it at 93.7, the fan. You know, I, I got to take a little time because, you know, hey, it's all about hometown to talk about one of the members who happens to be number 36 in your Dodger program, Adam Libertor. He's 31 years of age and uh, he bats left, but what he does on the mound is what has made him a big leaguer. He's a reliever who throws left-handed. Let me tell you a little bit about Adam Libertor. He uh, attended Quigley Catholic, but eventually graduated from Blackhawk, went on to Tennessee Technologies, as in Texas Tech, and played for the Golden Eagles there. And then found his way with Tampa Bay to the Bigs, and then after a trade went to Hollywood and the West Coast to play for the Los Angeles Dodgers, that great franchise, one of the most historic in Major League Baseball, going back to their days as the Brooklyn Dodgers, right? Well, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this young man, as many of you will be going to see the L.A. Dodgers. And, you know, when I was a kid, when any of the teams came in from the West Coast, that was a big deal. That was an added bonus, right? Especially when it was the uh, team that had players like Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale and many others, Dusty Baker. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you will be headed to PNC Park, the greatest ballpark in America for the Dodgers series, which begins tomorrow night. And I'm sure because of Adam Libertor's connection to Beaver County, a lot of free tickets are going to be handed out. So a lot of folks are going to get a really wonderful opportunity to go watch Big League Baseball at its best right along the mighty Allegheny River and that beautiful Pittsburgh skyline. It's an incredible treat. But I wanted to go back to the 60s and Adam's father, Jack Libertor, his brother Tommy, his sister Patty, and his late sister Lynn. Obviously his mom passed away a few years ago, a wonderful lady who meant so much to all of us in our neighborhood. And his father, Gene, still alive and doing well living in New Brighton, Pennsylvania. And that's where we all grew up, in a place called Galbranson Heights, truly one of the most magical places that anybody could spend their adolescence and young teenage years trying to uh, mature into a man and understand what life was all about. But back then, it was about a lot of fun, especially summertime. You know, where Jack lived, through the woods, just a, I don't know, a stone's throw from his backyard, there was an open field that we, the original Brighton boys, my Pratt Pack, would play baseball for hours on a beautiful summer day. And you know, this was the time when uh, we all rode our Stingray bicycles, even through the woods, through the creeks, did whatever we had to do, briar patches to get to that open field of dreams, right? And in tow with our glove and ball and bats, we would uh, pick up and play some baseball. Not just uh, an hour or two, three or four, but at the end, a lot of peanut butter sandwiches and jugs of Kool-Aid and a dip in someone's pool and we were ready to go and sleep out into the night and just walk around our hill and dare to dream about what it was like. Uh, well, folks, the future. And whoever thought that the future would bring a Major League Baseball player to one of the crowning members of that pack. You know, uh, Jack was a really tough kid. Absolutely have a lot of respect for him. And you know, back in the day when I loved boxing, I used to have dreams of getting him into the ring because I believed he could have been the next Rocky Graziano. That's right, folks, Jake LaMotta, the Raging Bull. This is a, a dad who has a lot of uh, incredible drive, still working for that great brand that is American Airlines, he and his lovely bride, still together living in Chippewa, and uh, Jack has uh, turned out to be a pretty successful entrepreneur in his own right, and uh, I have watched him grow into a heck of a man. You know, going back, Jack and I spent a lot of time in my house. You know, he was one who was there in the very beginning when I was uh, playing a lot of vinyl as in music and uh, obviously my favorite, James Brown, and he will attest to that, the godfather of soul, we were uh, enjoying that as well growing up. You know, I, I miss those days and obviously when I close my eyes at night, sometimes I go back to what it was like under those sun-drenched skies as a kid in Galbranson Heights. And I surely at times, because life just has a way of throwing you, like Jack's son can do, a curveball, um, quiet and gentler times and happier times. But one thing I know, watching his son on the big league mound representing the L.A. Dodgers, it surely makes me feel a whole lot better that, you know what, things turned out for the best. Because you know what, sometimes life doesn't always turn out for the best. But as far as the Libertor family, ladies and gentlemen, they get a blue ribbon. And if you get a chance to either listen to the games on 93.7 The Fan or you're there in attendance or 
the AT&T Sports Network, uh, obviously broadcasting the games as well. And when they say now pitching number 36 for the Dodgers, Adam Libertor, just remember, original Brighton boys, called Branson Heights, his father Jack, and his obviously incredible mother. All right, folks, enjoy the rest of your day from your Pratt Pack.